PAT offers Exaptitude Test, Test Maths and Physics skills. This exam is key to applying for any variant of Physics, Engineering or Materials Science at Oxford. But what exactly is the PAT like and how can you best prepare for it? My name is Sam and this is Oxcentric. I sat the PAT 2019 as part of applying to Engineering at Oxford and it was probably the most terrifying exam of my life so far. No joke, after I got home I was kind of lay on the floor and had a small to moderate breakdown. <laughs> The 2019 PAT was the hardest so far with a mean mark of 41.5%, a drop of more than 10% from the year prior. This may well be an anomaly, but being as prepared as possible can help you to succeed regardless of how tough the paper is. In this video I'm going to explain the nature of the exam, what kind of questions are on it and finally how you can prepare. Part 1. The PAT Format In 2020, the PAT lasts 2 hours, contains 100 marks and consists of mixed maths and physics questions. In its present form, multiple choice questions do appear and you can use a calculator, however you do not get a formula sheet. The PAT syllabus can be found on the Oxford Physics website. This includes all of Year 12 Maths and Physics, and a few elements of Year 13 Maths and Physics. The Year 13 Maths content tested includes exponentials, natural logarithms, and integration. Meanwhile, the Year 13 Physics includes capacitors, electric fields, and circular motion. Anything on the syllabus could appear on the exam. For this reason, I recommend going through the document and attempting to learn any topics that you haven't already covered. Part 2. Question Types Though each year is different, some PAT questions can be approximately categorised. Around 12 multiple choice questions make up the first part of the PAT. They are the shortest full questions, worth 2 marks each, and generally seen as the easiest on the paper. I would advise you not to rush this section, however do refrain from spending too long on any single question, as you'll need more time on harder problems later. Standard mathematical questions are similar to the kind that you would find on an A-level maths paper. These may require knowledge of core skills like differentiation, sequences and solving quadratics, but should prove manageable for most, especially further math students. However, there are also unusual mathematical questions. These test a mathematical concept, but may include a basis within a real-life scenario or some other twist. These require you to analyse a question, decide what maths is needed and then execute it. For instance, this example contextualises a geometric sequences problem. Geometric maths problems use your knowledge of shapes to find areas, lengths and angles. Usually there is at least one major geometric question each year worth around 6-7 to seven marks. They are often based on the situation using circles, triangles and regular polygons. The cosine rule, sine rule and circle theorems frequently appear in these questions. Standard physics questions are like standard mathematical, using physics skills you may already be familiar with in a style similar to A-level. This example is a resistor networks question, a common subgenre of this type that often appears. Unusual physics questions make up a large proportion of the paper. These introduce new physics formulae and concepts. These require you to find what you know in a question as they will be rooted in familiar ideas. Finally, dimensional analysis questions are a common subgenre of standard physics. They involve looking at the units or dimensions of equations. They are usually in the multiple choice section or can be a small part of a larger question. A classic example requires you to simplify formulae down into SI units to find the odd one out. The questions I've shown here will be explained in a later video to show you how to approach such problems. Part 3. Calculators As aforementioned, since 2018 calculators can be used on the PAT. However, you might not be able to use your normal A-level calculator and may instead have to use the one you used at GCSE. When practicing papers, pay attention to whether a calculator is allowed and complete them as such. This means your result will be more valid to compare with any cutoff marks and distributions. Many questions on the PAT use algebra or physics concepts that can't be solved with a calculator, so be aware you won't need it all the time. Part 4. Mark Schemes Oxford do not release a mark scheme for the PAT. However, multiple sources have published their work solutions for free online. Firstly, I recommend the Physics and Maths Tutor solutions which I used in my revision. Next, the Oxford PAT blog solutions are another good set. Lastly, I published my own solutions for 2019's paper if you want to check those out. If you need formalised type solutions, there are books available, however these can be quite expensive and are not a necessity to doing well. Each PAT exam is accompanied with an ambitious report for that year by the Physics Department. These include a handy graph that shows mark distributions that can indicate how well you did relative to the cohort that sat the paper. Some years the report will state an interview mark cutoff where candidates who scored above this mark got an interview. Be aware that this only applies to physics applicants and it seems as of 2019 they now use a different shortlisting methodology. The general consensus is that the cutoff for engineering and material science is lower than that for pure physics, or rather that the exam plays a smaller role in their shortlisting process. 
try not to let the marking scare or dishearten you. You are not expected to get even close to 100% right. For most of these papers, 50-60% to 60 is an impressive achievement. Part 5. How to practice. This is my personal strategy I use to approach practicing for the PAT. Before the exam, I would aim to attempt every past paper at least once. I advise you sit at least three papers under timed exam conditions and mark them. Whilst this is hard work, it is the most realistic experience you can get. Marking the papers yourself, in my opinion, is the best way to become aware of your mistakes and how to fix them. I personally attempted every PAT paper twice before the exam, completing them all under non-exam conditions before the summer and again under exam conditions in September and October. I would recommend starting with the oldest papers, as these are generally easier and working your way towards the present. By the time you reach the harder papers, you will be better practiced on the skills you require. I found recording my scores was a good way to track progress. However, don't be alarmed if your score starts to go down as you get towards the most recent paper. This is quite normal. Once you should prioritise completing the past papers, I used several other resources in my revision. Firstly, I completed all the Cambridge NGAR papers. The format is different to the PAT, as the NGAR is entirely multiple choice, but it is still useful practice. In the NGAR, the main challenges are time management and quick thinking. The questions often focus on pure maths, physics and logic, which are also essential skills for the PAT. Next, I want to study engineering.org contains a wide range of applied maths and physics problems. All the interview style problems include a work solution, which makes it easier to chain your answer or get hints if you are stuck. Lastly, Isaac Physics has many questions you can use to revise, despite not all of them having fully worked solutions. Part 6. Conclusion. The PAT is an unpredictable exam, but with plenty of past papers and practice, you can develop the thinking skills that will help you gain a strong score. Remember that this is not like an A-level exam, the marking is less rigid and a seemingly modest score can still distinguish your application. Like I said earlier, I thought my PAT performance was at best below average, but I was still able to obtain an offer. Whilst a good PAT score is a great way to boost your application, it is not the only part. So if you feel like it went badly, don't give up. Please check out part 2 where I'm going to be completing some example questions to show you how to approach them. In the meanwhile, I wish you the best of luck with your PAT preparation. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. If you feel like it went badly, badly, yeah!